Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group for part number three of this five-part series where Jesus opens the way through the veil in our study of the book of Hebrews. And today, we're going to, switch the, we're going to flip the switch. We're going to go from that negative, which we have to understand and realize so that we can appreciate the positive. And to see now how we got a new and living way through the veil. How sin is like this separator between us and our creator. But we got a way through that. His name is Jesus. And we're going to focus on that now for hearing the balance of the series. And so before we get into it, I want to remind you, if you're liking what you're hearing, praise the Lord. It's the word of God. Be sure to share it with somebody else. Like the video so others can find it and subscribe to our channel. And if you haven't already, please visit our homepage. Our website is changeministry.org, where there's so much more there, including different Bible studies on a lot of different topics, not just Sabbath School Study Group. There's Sabbath School Youth Group. There's Change Bible Study and so much more. Go check it out. And then if you want to give to the ministry, we appreciate you. So that God's word and this work can keep growing, we need your help. And you can do that by donating to changeministry.org slash donate. And you can click the button below, even easier to find. With that said, let's pray. Father, we thank you now for the new and living way through the veil. And as we look at our hope, I pray that it puts hope in our heart. Amen. We have identified sin as a... Uh, symbolized in the veil that causes us to no longer be able to look at God and, and in, in, a, in a poetic sense, not allowing for him to connect with us as the all-knowing, all-seeing, everywhere God. There's, it's impossible to, to not be uh, seen by him as evidenced in the garden back in Genesis. They saw him, but they were no longer in relationship. No, no let me, I, I think I said they saw him. He saw them. Yeah, yeah. He saw them and they were trying to run from him. But whither can I go up in your presence, David, David said. I can go to heaven. I can go to the bottom of hell. Anywhere in between. I can't get away from him. But sin does break the relationship. Seen by him, but not knowing him. That's the case with most of the world today. And that's why we're in the mess that we're in. But guess what? There's a way out. His name is Jesus. Because Jesus replaces sin as the veil between us and the Father. And now what happens We've got Jesus between us and the Father. I gotta say it again. Jesus doesn't just tear down the veil. He now, he becomes the veil. He becomes the one between us and the Father. Now, now, why are we trying to paint the picture of Jesus as a veil? Because we've got to look at this right uh, in, in three dimensions. On the one side, you've got us looking at the Father which means then on the other side, you've got the father looking at us and we want to make sure that I want to make sure that the father is looking at me through the son. Because if he just sees me, he's just going to see sin. He's just going to see a sinner. But if he looks at us through the lens of Christ's righteousness, he can't see the sin because Christ has blotted it out. He can't see the stuff that would cause me to be consumed. Instead, he only sees a son and, 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 and he's able to bring me unto himself legally without fear of consuming me and without fear of me running from him. Let's look at this thing from the Bible now. In Hebrews chapter 10, Jesus replacing the veil, Jesus now being between us and the father. It says in Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore brethren boldness, to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Please focus on verse 20 by a new and living way. What is that way? It's the way which he, which Jesus has consecrated for us. How did he do that? Through the veil. That is to say, or in other words, the new veil, the new border between God and man is Jesus. <laughs> it's not a curtain. It's not a fabric wall, but it is the way, the truth, and the life himself. The rock now 
This, these, these, all these words used to analogize the role that Christ plays with us here, Hebrews 10 is telling us he's a veil too. He's the way through from us where we are now to the holiest. That is to say his flesh. I, I, I never thought of it like this until I, the spirit started to speak and Jesus was speaking through this verse and said, like, whoa, I'm the veil. I'm the one and the way that you go through, Chris, to get to the Father. And that's why Paul says, now, church, we can come with boldness. In fact, let me not just not say church. Anybody who comes in the name of Jesus can go boldly. I don't care who you are, because it's not about who you are. It's about who he is and where he is. And that's why you can get there, too. Look at another verse. It says in Hebrews 9, verse 18 to 21, whereupon neither the first testament, talking about the old covenant, was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and he sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, this is the blood of the testament. This is the blood of the covenant which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Here in Hebrews 9, we see that the high priest on earth, Aaron and his sons, and the earthly sanctuary sprinkled pretty much blood on everything, meaning they sprinkled blood on the veil. That's why the veil had to be cleansed periodically and replaced. Because after a year's worth of blood being sprinkled, it was at the cleansing or the day of atonement, the cleansing of the sanctuary, that that veil had to be replaced. The veil was sprinkled with blood, as everything else was, not just to cleanse it, so to speak, but to also serve as a, as a, as a pro, prophetic promise that at one point now, we've got this wall up that protects us from being consumed but, and, and that also prohibits us from being in the presence of God. Now, one day when Jesus has come, when he has shed his blood, that blood was going to be the way that we could now have a right and opportunity to come before the throne of grace because what was the argument against us being there? We're sinners. But if the blood was there, the blood could say, no, he's a sinner, but I have paid for that sin. Here I am, this wall of blood that now we're able to go through, but it's not a wall of blood, it's Jesus. He is the veil now between us and the Father, and it's through him now that we have access to the King. One more, it says in Hebrews chapter 6, 19 through 20, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enter into that within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made in high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Again, here we see the biblical evidence of who and how we're afforded to be in the presence of God. No longer is there a veil of separation, but now we've got a new and living way. And he is like a living veil, the veil that covers up all the stuff that needs to be covered while at the same time giving me full access full clearance, security clearance <laughs> to be before our heavenly father. You've got top secret security clearance through Jesus Christ. How dare we not use that to our advantage? How dare we not go to God and seek his counsel when we've got top, top secret security clearance? How dare we think that he is not wanting to share his mind with us when he's given us top secret security clearance through a new and living way, even the living veil, and he's wide open. That's why when Jesus was crucified, he was crucified with his arms wide open because while he is the veil through which we now go to receive peace and have relationship with God our Father, it's open to all. So at this point now, the choice is yours. I pray we choose. I pray that we like, share, and give this video to someone else to encourage them. 
But ultimately, we believe we got a new and better way.